All right, folks, welcome back. Now I'm going to teach you the third style, which is called object-oriented programming. So this is also known as OOP, and you may have heard this before. If you've heard of the language Java or C++, which is on the bottom, some examples. These are examples of object-oriented dominated programming. The idea is the following. Everything in your program is an object, OK? And they are data structures. They're a way you, you contain their data. Um, you have each object, for example, what do I have here? For example, a pianist. A pianist. I have a, I have a simulation of people running around. And one of, the, one of the examples is that somebody plays piano. Okay? So that person has their name. They have the ability to play piano. So I could ask of that person, please play a concerto. And the person starts to play concerto. It's like, I'm, it's like I'm hiring them in some sense. So I can ask, I could say, uh, walk around the room, and they'd walk around the room. So each of these objects has methods that you can ask them to do, things that they know how to do, right? Just like another hue, just like somebody you're paying to, you know, to clean your house. You could say, clean, clean the windows. They clean the windows. You clean the floor, clean the floor. You scrub the sink, scrub the sink. Penis, you can ask other things too. They're different, right? Different objects might have different methods, what they can do. Each object also has properties. We call that local state. So each object might have things about itself. It might have their name, so that name might be in common, and not the same opposite name, but both a pianist and a, a, a house cleaner might have a name, you know, might have abilities to have a name. But the piano person might have local state is the number of songs they know by heart. House cleaner doesn't have that kind of thing. That's, that's not there. They could play by heart on request. House cleaner might be the, the kind of chemicals that work really well on getting a stain out of a sink. Piano person knows none about that. So local state is like a local set of information that each object has. You have classes and instances. The idea is you make a, like a factory. This is a piano person maker. And I turn the crank, and out comes up oh, piano person. Turn the crank again, out comes another piano person. Each of these things are different people. That might be, I might assign a random name to them all. So I write a random name from the alphabet, random name from the list of baby names. Crank it, oh, here's Al, the piano person. Crank it again, here's Susanna, piano person. I can keep cranking it and getting random names. And these are different objects. Okay? Then <clears throat> you also have, so the, uh, the factory is like a class. And I turn the crank and I get instances, a particular instance. So Al and Susanna are two instances of objects that are not the class. The class is this factory. Okay? Inheritance is a really powerful idea. And inheritance saves us reducing code. Remember how annoying we were back in the day when we were looking at functions? And we said, look, here is um, move, move and turn four times, but move 100. This is move and turn 25. This is move and turn 395. And it's like annoying to have three separate pieces of code that were basically all draw square with different variables. We want to have generalization. Well, you end up having with big object models and big object source code, you end up having things that are in common. For example, both the piano person and a house cleaner both go home at night and both have the meal they just ate and both have parents and children and things that humans have and things that employees have, like you know, tax ID numbers. They each have a tax ID number and a field in their local state for their tax ID number because they're employees. And you end up realizing the way the code that you have, which is like <clears throat> file tax, that you have for both the piano file tax and the house cleaner file tax are the same thing. Why do you have the same code out of file tax? That's just a people thing. That's not about a particular to the piano person. So you end up having these hierarchies. An the example I gave is a piano pianist is a special case of a musician, someone who performs music for a living. And a piano is a special case of that. A musician is a special case of a performer. A performer might be a special case of an employee, which might be a special case of a human. Okay, which might be a special case of a mammal. Right? You keep going up the chain. Much might be a special case of a living thing. So this huge thing allows you to isolate the code about something. Where would you put the code for doing taxes? Well, you wouldn't put it in mammal, because ma not all mammals do taxes. You might put it in human, or maybe employees, because not all humans are employees. My kid doesn't have a job. He shouldn't have the tax code in him. It should be in employees. So you can isolate the code and have it exist once in the tree, in a really cool way, and have the code to do taxes only in employees. How to play the piano perfectly, how to tune and make sure the piano's tuned is on the piano, because you wouldn't put under musicians 
A trombonist wouldn't know how to tune a piano. So it's all about the special case or code that's relevant to that particular class of things. It's really cool and reduces, when you have a really complex system or simulation, it really reduces where repeat code lives. It's really very nice. People who work with inheritance love it in terms of isolating where stuff lives. So each object knows about itself, knows about its local state. Each object knows um, the methods it can do, and it reveals the methods it can do, like play piano, tune piano, clean a sink. And it exposes those people who then can ask it questions. Say, here are the things you can ask of me. I'm a piano player. You can ask me to play a song. You can ask me to walk around the room. You can ask me to file my taxes. That's all I know how to do. Okay, house cleaner might say, I know how to clean a window. I know how to do other things. So you would share things that are your methods that are exposed to the other world, and you have those methods isolated in the inheritance hierarchy. A lot of, lot of new words for this. This is hard. You'll often see this in your second class for majors at a university. So if you follow up with this, you'll do this. Or if you're taking the AP Computer Science A exam, you see those issues in when you're learning Java in AP CSA. So I'm now going to show you an example, probably the most amazing example of an object-oriented programming uh, code base, which came years and years ago by a wonderful man named Dr. Ivan Sutherland. And he we had the great fortune of having him come to Berkeley for several years. Um, he is known as the father of computer graphics, which is awesome. He invented the field of computer graphics. People often say this video and his thesis at MIT was the, was the beginning of computer graphics. So I'm going to show you object-oriented programming, but in a visual way. And you'll say, oh, I get it. What's an object? What's a class? What's a factory? What he uses, by the way, is a different style, subtly different, called prototyping OOP. And prototyping OOP is a little different than the classes and factory I talked about, in which any instance can be itself a factory. So I have an example here of a particular shape. And I can say, this is a factory, make copies of it. And then if I go back and change this one, these guys are like my children, they'll change as well. It's called a prototyping. So it's like the prototype, I can make those. And these can be prototypes. So it's a little bit different flavor to OOP, OK? So, and I'm going to see, we'll come back to, after I show you the video, we'll come back to this one. It says, it's the first object-oriented system ever. It's the first graphical user interface, and it's the first non-procedural language. Not procedural meaning a graphical language rather than a normal text-based procedural language, okay? So we do a little quickie video check, and then we'll come on back. 